The beach stays hot, the cool stays crisp. Put it together, you can't resist. Could be the best lettuce and tomato hamburger ever. Number 20, Mix Salad Shakers. We commend McDonald's for trying to offer their customers more healthy menu options, especially doing it all the way back in 2000, which was arguably earlier than many of their competitors. With the mixed salad shakers, diners were invited to pick one of three options – chef, Caesar, or garden salad. Add the dressing, and then in an admittedly fun bit of product packaging, cover and shake the domed cup in which the salads were served. Unfortunately, the mixed salad shaker failed on two counts. First, people generally don't go to McDonald's when they have a hankering for salad. Secondly, the meager, low-quality ingredients fell far short of the lush green salads advertised. Number 19. Arch Deluxe Over the years, we've seen McDonald's make countless attempts at a premium burger. They're rarely long for this world, but the Arch Deluxe was an especially colossal flop. Introducing the burger with the grown-up taste, McDonald's Arch Deluxe. The marketing campaign was massive and focused on selling the Arch Deluxe as a McDonald's burger for adults. It insinuates that all the other burgers people have been enjoying are for kids, and that mature consumers should embrace the new deluxe line of sandwiches, with this burger leading the charge. I'm in the zone. All layered together in one symphony of taste. The development, marketing, and rollout is estimated to have cost $300 million and utterly failed to convert customers, who balked at the price, high calorie count, and the tone of the commercials. Today, it's remembered as one of the company's most expensive misfires. America's favorite new burger. Number 18, McGratin Croquette. McDonald's filet -O fish can be a hit or miss item with most consumers, but at least it's reminiscent of the familiar frozen fish sticks most people ate as kids. The best selling fish sandwich in America. Tell them your nickname, Henry. They call me Jaws. That being said, it seems most clients would prefer that McDonald's stay away from seafood. The strange concoction called the McGratton Croquette feels like the end result of a chopped basket of secret ingredients gone wrong. The Gurakoro, as it's known in Japan, consists of ground shrimp, mashed potatoes, and deep-fried macaroni, all mushed together into a patty. Smother it in mystery brown sauce, and you've got yourself a culinary misadventure. It was designed specifically for Japanese markets, but guess what? Japan was not interested. Apparently, the odd marketing didn't help either. Number 17, Chopped Beefsteak Sandwich. Only McDonald's puts it all together, 100% pure beef. The late 70s were an exciting period of innovation in American pop culture history. McDonald's, not wanting to be left out, prepared to unveil the Chopped Beefsteak Sandwich, and for the most part, it was deemed delicious. Unfortunately, as is so often the case with groundbreaking new products, it reportedly priced itself out of reach for the average consumer, apparently ringing up at $1.29 to the regular burger's 40 cents. Many fast foodies lucky enough to try it in the early 80s remember it as one of the greatest sandwiches to ever touch their palates. But the steep price made it too hard to swallow, even after McDonald's tried throwing in a free dessert. Nobody can do it like McDonald's can. Nobody. Number 16, Fried Roast Beef Sandwich. For a company that's conquered the globe by selling beef, as in hamburgers, you'd think that McDonald's would have a better handle on how to successfully market that same meat in its other popular forms. Between this and the chopped beef steak sandwich, however, McDonald's has repeatedly proven otherwise. Back in 1968, in an effort to compete with Arby's, which was only a few years old at the time, McDonald's released a roast beef sandwich of their own. Announcing roast beef on a roll. And guess what? People loved it. So why was it a flop? simple economics. The roast beef was freshly sliced, and the need to install and operate a meat slicer in every McDonald's proved too inefficient in terms of time, cost, and profitability. McDonald's is my kind of place. McDonald's is my kind of place. Number 15, Mighty Wings. So tell me what happened. We were playing for the Mighty Wings. More like mighty unpopular. According to most reviewers and consumers, there was nothing spectacularly bad about these wings. They were just unremarkable. Some, though, found the crispy Mighty Wings closer to fried chicken than to real buffalo wing. McDonald's is a juggernaut in the fast food world, and every so often they try to branch out to corner another end of the market. But just in time for football season, McDonald's is getting serious with real chicken wings called Mighty Wings. But with so many tried and true choices out there for delicious chicken wings, you can't blame consumers for continuing to take their business elsewhere on game night. Sales numbers were so poor that McDonald's lowered the price from an average of $1 per wing to 60 cents. This was allegedly done in order to liquidate the 10 million surplus wings they had left in stock when it became clear that the product had flopped. One bite 
and you'll never give them up. New Mighty Weights from McDonald's. Number 14, Angus Burgers. Another entry in a long line of failed premium burgers, the Angus Burger was first rolled out in select markets around 2006. Boasting a thick, juicy patty made of pure Angus beef, the sandwich came in one of four options. Mushroom and Swiss, bacon and cheese, chipotle barbecue bacon, and, wait for it, the Angus Deluxe. We know, you'd think the word deluxe would have left a bad taste in the mouth of the company after the Arch Deluxe, but apparently not. McDonald's really stuck it out with the Angus Burger, and it eventually developed a dedicated following, albeit a notably small one. In 2013, the burger was discontinued in the United States, though it generally continues to be offered in Canada. Wanna switch? Of course you do. Number 13, McHot Dog. Hot dogs or hamburgers? That's the question most commonly asked at a summer barbecue. So don't hot dogs seem like a guaranteed success for any major fast food franchise? Well, Mickey D's and hot dogs have had a long and complicated history. In fact, the McDonald's Corporation founder Ray Kroc banned hot dogs from his restaurants because there's no way to know what's inside them. Following his death in 1984, however, a number of attempts have been made to introduce hot dogs in one form or another to the McDonald's menu in select North American and UK markets. Hot dogs are hot again, and they're new at McDonald's. But time and time again, they just fail to catch on. There's even been an attempt to market a chili McHot dog in Japan. Ugh, the horror. Number 12, fajitas. When you're big, it can be tempting to try to do it all. More often than not, however, when McDonald's gets greedy and tries to take a bite out of competitors' markets like Taco Bell's, it misses the mark. Even though McDonald's does now have a breakfast burrito and tried tortas in California back around 2000, fajitas were its big attempt. Now at McDonald's, a new taste. Chicken fajitas. First rolled out in the 90s, McDonald's fajitas consisted of a soft-shell tortilla, grilled vegetables, and chicken. Most people seemingly found them palatable enough, just unremarkable and not what they were after when they went to McDonald's. Though relatively short-lived in the United States, a version of the McDonald's fajita enjoyed greater success in other countries. The burrito-style McWraps have similarly been pulled from many countries. The new morning McWrap. Number 11, Son of Mac. Sometimes referred to as Baby Mac, Mini Mac, Mac Jr. or Kids Mac, depending on the market, this burger is a Big Mac without the second burger patty and middle bun. So in short, it's pretty much a cheeseburger dressed as a Big Mac. Don't get us wrong, that sounds like the lighter, easier-to-eat version of the Big Mac that many consumers want. The thing is, those who want it can already get it by ordering exactly what it is, a cheeseburger dressed as a Big Mac. It's one of the most popular off-menu customizations, but McDonald's various attempts over the years to make it official have just felt really half-hearted in terms of marketing. It's the taste of a Big Mac in a snack. Number 10, the McLean Deluxe. We're here because McLean Deluxe is 100% delicious. Two words that don't add up. McDonald's and sophisticated. Two other words tough to pair in a sentence? McDonald's and healthy. If it's low fat, it can't be delicious. The deluxe line aimed to corner the adult fast food market by presenting an entire line of sophisticated McDonald's products, including this supposedly healthy low fat burger. It achieved the lower fat content by using about 90% lean beef in its patties and adding water to replace the missing fat. It's 91% fat free, but all people talk about is its big burger taste. But how would they bind it all together? Seaweed to the rescue. Carrageenan, a seaweed extract, is a common thickening or binding agent used in the processed food industry. Mouth not watering yet? This dry burger was deemed to be lacking flavor despite flavor additives, and thus earned itself the nickname McFlopper. McLean Deluxe, forget the fat, remember the taste at McDonald's today. Sorry, green. Hmm? Green. Number nine, McSpaghetti. It's hard to believe that anyone at McDonald's had faith in this product. Don't people go out for fast food because they don't feel like having spaghetti for the third time that week? McDonald's tried it in Italy, and unsurprisingly, it bombed. Nothing sells quite like a country's most cherished and widely available dish, as poorly prepared by an American fast food chain. It's a benefit, Bobby. It's a spaghetti dinner. But we don't make spaghetti. America was equally disinterested. It took too long to prepare, lacked flavor, and simply couldn't satisfy the cravings that drive people to McDonald's in the first place. They wanted fast food. I thought I told you, Bob. You and your spaghetti aren't welcome here. The weirdest thing about the McSpaghetti, though, it was a surprise hit in the Philippines and is still available there today. It almost tastes like spaghetti with ketchup. I'm gonna have another spoonful here. Number eight, onion nuggets. 
Ever seen that prank where people take an onion, put it on a stick, and then dip it in caramel or sugar to trick people into thinking it's a candied apple? Well, McDonald's did something similar back in the 70s, but it wasn't a gag. It was a real menu item they were pushing in test markets. The product was essentially McDonald's attempt to make their own unique spin on onion rings, taking small chunks of onion and battering and deep frying them. And you know what? Those few people who tried them actually remember onion nuggets fondly. Unfortunately, they were pulled from the menu and are now little more than a footnote in the history of Chicken McNuggets, which debuted in the early 80s. Cause you deserve a break today. With chicken cooked for McDonald's way. Number 7. Fish McBites McDonald's really hit it out of the park when they introduced the Chicken McNuggets, a childhood favorite that legions of customers keep eating well into adulthood. But as failures like our previous entry remind us, there's more to this winning formula than simply the nugget format. Fishy, fishy. Fish McBites will succulent and bread it to perfection. So take a trip to Mickey D's and get you, get, get, get you served. Fish McBites were a 2013 attempt by McDonald's to recreate the runaway and enduring success of their McNuggets, but with fish. The dish came in three portion sizes, snack, regular, and shareable, and were served with tartar sauce for dipping. The reality is, however, that fishy fast food often has limited appeal, and so the Fish McBites were deemed a failure and pulled from the menu the same year they debuted. Get hooked on McDonald's new Fish McBites. Pop them with tangy tartar or spicy buffalo sauce. Catch them while you can. Number 6. McSoup This one is a food offering that, if we didn't know better, we'd assume was a parody of McDonald's naming strategy. It's just so basic and laughably straightforward. But it happened, and it failed every bit as spectacularly as you might expect. Available in select markets over the winter months, the McSoup came in two varieties, broccoli and cheese and classic chicken noodle. But here's the thing. McDonald's didn't hire a crack team to develop their own instantly recognizable trademark versions of these two soups. They literally just licensed it from Campbell's. That's right, McDonald's was essentially trying to charge people to heat up soup they could get at the grocery store. Mick, no thanks. Number 5. Hula Burger That's that Hawaiian burger joint. I hear they got some tasty burgers. This one was bad. Like, really bad. While many McDonald's products have failed over the years due to pricing or marketing issues, the Hula Burger was simply a bad sandwich. Ray Kroc may have turned a handful of restaurants into the world's largest fast food franchise, but his pineapple burger was one hool of a bad idea. Previously, strict Catholics would not eat meat on Fridays. So the company thought they could capitalize on that demographic with this meatless sandwich. Turns out that the filet of fish was more desirable than a slice of grilled pineapple and cheese. The hula burger was pulled from restaurants shortly after its debut. He calls them my Hawaiian burgers. Well, they don't taste like burgers at all. They taste like styrofoam. Number 4. Mick Africa. And speaking of bad naming, this was a burger wrapped in pita bread sold exclusively in Norway and in honor of the Olympics. But consider the fact that Southern Africa was suffering from one of the worst food shortages in the history of the region in 2002, with an estimated 14 million people in urgent need of food aid, and you'll see that the bad taste wasn't necessarily in the burger itself, but in the choice of name and timing. McDonald's addressed the issue by apologizing, and by allowing humanitarian aid agencies to put up posters and donation boxes in their locations. They did not, however, stop selling the product until September of that year. And then, they released another one in 2008 for the Beijing Olympics, again to heavy criticism. Number 3. McStuffins Remember earlier when we were talking about McDonald's trying to take a bite out of other fast food niches? Well, in the early 90s, they attempted to compete with the microwavable snack-slash-meal market by putting out their own pocket-style sandwiches. We're gonna bake our own French bread. You're gonna bake French bread? Yeah, all day. The logic seemed to be that McStuffins eliminated the oh-so-grueling effort of microwaving your Hot Pocket or other such savory turnover. But here's the thing. Those meals are all about the convenience of a quick bite at home, work, or school. When you put in the effort of getting yourself to a McDonald's, chances are you're gonna opt for a burger and fries. Due to poor sales, the McStuffins were discontinued in 1993, the same year they debuted. Number 2. The McDLT uh, uh, what do you want, Michael? A McDLT? No, I already told you they don't make those anymore. You know, sometimes it's a regional thing. You could ask. No McDonald's anywhere makes a McDLT anymore. When it comes to failed fast food sandwiches, this is the stuff of legend. 
We could describe it to you, but we'd rather let Jason Alexander do the talking. The beer stays hot, the cool stays crisp. Put it together, you can't resist. Could be the best lettuce and tomato hamburger ever. The fact that they went through the trouble and extra styrofoam to build this dual chamber hamburger containment system just to keep the tomato and lettuce cool and crisp is commendable, but so unnecessary. Furthermore, people get fast food on the go when they want something quick, easy, and ready to eat. Trying to combine the two halves of the burger without losing the toppings might not be rocket science, but it's still enough work to undermine the core principles of fast food. I'm just saying they have all the ingredients for a McDeal. Even the talented Aretha Franklin couldn't convince customers. Could be the best taste in lettuce and tomato hamburger ever. New McDeal. Before we dig into our top pick, here are some honorable, or we guess dishonorable mentions. McLobster. Still available seasonally, but only in select markets. The delicious McLobster. Get one before they're gone. Big and tasty. Designed to compete with Whopper, but failed. Introducing the next big thing from McDonald's. Supersize items. An extra large problem. They said to make it huge. It's supersized. Now you can supersize your McDonald's extra value meal. Spanish omelet breakfast bagel sandwich. It just didn't have that McDonald's breakfast taste. Eggs Benedict McMuffin, because no one wants McDonald's made hollandaise sauce. Number 1. Pizza and McPizza In the late 80s, McDonald's had about 40% of the American burger market, but sales consistently lagged around supper time. Pizza mega franchises like Pizza Hut simply ruled dinner. But Mickey D's had already won breakfast and were committed to claiming all three meals. Though they had test marketed personal sized pizzas in the late 70s, the following years saw them introduce various pizza sizes in various locations, including the Pizza Pocket style McPizza, which failed. But with their fresh made oven baked pizza, they were going all in. The pizza was relatively well received, but the wait time was not. For a franchise that conquered on a campaign of speedy service, this was a deal breaker. For the first time ever, he'll make dinner for his family. Pizza was a wrench in the well greased gears of the McDonald's kitchen. By the end of the 90s, the McDonald's pizza dream was essentially dead. No dessert for me, Mom. I don't deserve it. Family sized pepperoni pizza. It's a parent's dream come true. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.